likely to be dangerous, but uh, Pluto is in Aquarius, which Pluto is all about transformation. And Pluto in Aquarius often brings up the dark night of the soul. Anybody here ever been through a dark night of the soul? I know we've all been through different things that take us down into despair sometimes. Both individually and collectively, there's a triggering event, something that triggers us, and we don't know what to do. We feel hopeless, we feel despair. We feel like God, not Elvis, has left the building. Have <laughs> you ever felt that way? Where have you gone, God? You're not here anymore. I don't know what to do. Well, the phrase, dark night of the soul, was coined by St. John of the Cross, who was a 15th century Carmelite friar and mystic. And his writings have the theology of Catholicism, but they share our same belief and experience of oneness with God and that one presence that we are all a part of. So his writings are wonderful mystical writings. And he had his own dark night of the soul. He was imprisoned and tortured and put in this small box, not much bigger than his own body. Now that would drive my claustrophobic uh, phobia is absolutely bananas. But he used it as a time to, if he couldn't move or go without, he went within. And through prayer, through contemplation, meditation, he went within and made that connection with his own divine nature. And after that became this uh, wonderful writer of poetry and writings about that experience of our connection with God. So most dark nights of the soul have a good outcome once you get through them. It's just making it through that experience that we all need. And I know I've been there, done that, paid my dues. I think I've shared the story with you. One of my dark night of the souls, I've had more than one. On my third year of ministry, I went back to Unity Village, locked myself in a restroom, and just started bawling my eyes out, saying, where are you, God? I became a minister. He didn't tell me it was going to be like this. And I realized I had to make a decision from three different choices. I could die. I felt like I was going to die. I could leave ministry, or I could become strong. And somehow I had the strength to make the choice to become strong. So a good outcome came out of that dark night of the soul. Of course, I'm making a long story really short on that. But the most common triggering events, and I'm sure you can all relate to one of these, grief, loss. Anybody here ever lost a relationship, a job, your home, your health, your income, your innocence? Loss can put you into one. Sickness, and I include physical, mental, emotional, any kind of sickness can put you into one. Or forced change. I'm Gemini, I love change, but not when it's forced on me. I like to decide what kind of change. I like. Anybody here like forced change? When you're laid off from a job or going through a divorce or you're forced to move? Not as fun, is it? Well, I'll tell you what, a dark night of the soul is and isn't. First of all, it's not a punishment from God, from some man in the sky. It's not a punishment. But it is an opportunity to free and heal those subconscious issues that we carry and to discover the power, like St. John of the Cross, discover the power that is in us. And those dark nights of the soul force us to, to go higher, to tap in deeper, to find that source that we're all a part of. And the good news is that it's usually followed by a total transformation, strengthening some inner qualities like I've had to do, or go to a higher level of consciousness and your life is never the same again. Doesn't mean you're never gonna have any more problems, but it's always gonna be from that higher level. Now, most people try to protect themselves. Is there a way to escape this? You know, do I really have to go through a dark night of the soul? I don't want to go through a dark night of the soul. Come, oh, darn, all together now, oh, darn. Is there a way to escape? And when I think about that, I love to go back to the story of Jonah and the whale in Scripture because he was the most pitiful character. I think I can be pitiful some days, but he had us all beat. He was so pitiful. God called him to go to Nineveh to prophesy to the people that if they didn't change their ways, he would destroy them. Of course, that's the way they looked at it back there, that God was gonna do it to them. 
Well, Jonah didn't want to do that. He got on a ship and went as fast as he could in the opposite direction of the calling that God had given him. And after he was on the ship for days or weeks, I don't know how long it was, there was a storm and the ship started to toss and turn and the ship was going to be thrown over into the waves. And he realized, oh, wait a minute, I ran from God. This could be a punishment. And so he went to the crew and admitted what he had done. I ran from God's calling. And they took it as bad luck and threw him overboard. <laughs> where he was swallowed by a whale. Now that's a whale of a story from here on, a whale of a story. And the only way to interpret it is metaphysically. Literally, it doesn't make a lot of sense. He was inside that whale for a couple days. Now, we all run from callings. We all run from our shadow issues. What issue are you avoiding, running from, or suppressing inside of you? Because if we don't face it, it will show up somewhere, and maybe as the dark night of the soul. You can't run from it. There's nowhere to hide. Wherever you go, whoops, there you are altogether. Now, whoops, wherever I go, there I am. And then we'll become swallowed up by despair in that dark night of the soul. And Jonah fell into a victim consciousness. Anybody here ever felt like a victim? Oh, well, come on now, it's easy. It's an me. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, look what's happening to me. It's all your fault, it's not me, right? He fell into such a victim consciousness. It was so bad. How bad was it? It was so bad that after three days, even the whale couldn't stomach him anymore and spit him out. That's how bad it was. And Jonah finally realized he had to answer that divine calling. And he went back to Nineveh and prophesied, you gotta straighten up and fly right, people, or you're gonna be destroyed. And they listened to him and they changed and they weren't destroyed. Now you'd think he'd have been happy about that, but he decided, it didn't happen. Now, nobody's ever going to believe my prophecies again because they didn't get destroyed. And he started to whine all over again. And I believe he was from the South, if you can hear this in a Southern accent. I can't always say Southern. Here He said, Lord, didn't I say before I left home this morning that this is just what you would do? That's why I did my best to run away. Now then, Lord, let me die. I'm better off dead than alive. Oh my, he needed a little wine with his cheese. Right? <laughs> Have you ever done that? I always say I need a five minute wine, but sometimes I stretch it a little longer. TK and I will give ourselves 10 minutes someday, won't we, TK? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I taught her to do that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> There's a Unity book in the bookstore, we've got a number of them, called Finding Yourself in Transition, and it's by the Reverend Robert Bummett. And he talks about those transitional times in your life when you have no control, life is just changing all around you. And he said there are three phases. There's an ending, a void, where you just don't know what's happening, you just don't know what to do when you're in this void. And then if you can make it through it, not around it, not running away from it, but through it, there's the new beginning and the new higher life. Now, give me a minute here. Endings can feel like losses, and there's grief with endings, and you have to allow that grief. You can't try to suppress it. You have to allow the grieving, and that's where that five-minute wine comes in. Admit what you're feeling. The old Unity True students, I always say they'd be standing there with their broken arm and blood squirting out all over and saying, everything's fine, it's all good, it's all good. No, it's not all good, but it can all lead to good, all right? Anyway, I'll go off on that all day if you let me. <laughs> so honor that, grieve through it, but trust there is another side. And when you're in that void, and voids feel uncomfortable, when you don't know what to do, when you don't see any way out, doesn't that feel uncomfortable? I know when Michael had his stroke years ago, he said he'd never experienced the void before. He couldn't even feel his connection with the divine. And eventually he worked his way out of that, but you told me what that felt like, being in that void, not knowing what to do, what's gonna happen. Mine is when I feel all revved up and nowhere to go. Do you ever do that? I know I should be doing something. I should be somewhere else doing something else. I just don't know what to do, but I'm all revved up and ready when it's 
time. Did anybody ever feel like that? And then when it's time, you know. You don't do anything till it's time. But when it's time, you know. And then come the new beginnings. If you can trust and find the blessing, your life is never the same again. And suddenly, it's all okay. You've made it through the dark night of the soul. And there's three types of people. See which one you are. People that either resist it, fight it, or run away. People that just blame, complain, or project it on someone else. It's your fault that I am. Has anybody ever had that happen? And the third type are those who accept it, go with it, move through it, no matter how it feels, no matter what it looks like. And Jonah was such a perfect example of what not to do. He ran from his calling. He ignored his shadow side. He was afraid of what others would think. And he was a bit of a wimp. And I can relate to that. Some days I feel like a bit of a wimp, too. Anybody here feel like a bit of a wimp some days? But what you can do is acknowledge, look, there's meaning in this. I can't see it right now. But there's a blessing in this somewhere. If I just move through it, and the key words are move through it not try to avoid it, suppress it, or move around it, or run from it. And then center in that divine presence, in the truth of your being, calling forth the guidance, calling forth the grace, while you're watching and waiting and listening for those inner promptings, what to do next. And it can take time, but that's where patience comes in. And then be willing to grow and change. Oh, no, I don't like that one either altogether. No, oh, darn, oh, darn. It's like the caterpillar watching the butterfly flitting around saying, you'll never get me out of one of those things. Well, yeah, we have to go up before we can transform, fly away. Uh, Science of Mind, which is our kissing cousin in the New Thought world, has a wonderful magazine, and one day they had this great write-up on this, and it was all about this. It said, when we remember the universal truth and look at events as opportunities to anchor deeper in spirit, in other words, those dark night of souls are opportunities to anchor deeper in your spirit, and we're able to move through the condition with grace, again, moving through it, not around it, we always get to the other side of every experience. When we do it through our center with spirit, we're able to witness spirit by whatever name you call that divine. At work in our lives, we are able to consciously see the unfolding of our experience to its eventual outcome, that's the new beginnings, rather than feeling as though it were something we simply endured until its grueling end. And so the planet right now, the whole planet, especially our country, seems to be going through a dark night of the soul. We've been here before. We're going to get through it. We just have to remember our oneness, keep tapping into our divine nature. If there's something for us to do, we'll feel that prompting. And we'll get to the other side, to the new beginnings, a new world of oneness and peace and harmony and light. Meanwhile, let us pray together. Uh, we are willing to release and let go of the struggle, let go of the effort, let go of fighting, and just going with it. I trust the divine flow in my life to take me where I need to be together. I trust the divine flow of my life to take me where I need to be. One more time. I trust the divine flow of my life to take me where I need to be. And then allow that presence the beauty of your light to show you the way, step by step, moment by moment. If there's no direction, it means it's not time yet. And when it is, you'll know, you'll feel that inner prompting, all revved up and ready to go through it. Not around it, not suppressing it, but through it. And with grace, we pray these things in the nature of the living Christ. And so it is. Amen.